Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, April 4th. Elon Musk is hyping up the Cybertruck production, as some still hold hope that Tesla might be under-promising to over-deliver. This weekend, the CEO said that he walked the production line in Austin and that he was impressed, adding that it feels like the future. Officially, Tesla is planning to start production of the truck this summer, but some Tesla fans believe that the automaker might be under-promising on the timeline. While the start of production could be this summer, or maybe sooner, the onset of volume production is much more important. Tesla will likely deliver fewer than 10,000 Cybertrucks this year, which is still a lot. <laughs> let's, let's be honest about that. However, the following year, expectations are around 150,000, a significantly important goal to achieve. Based on supply chain sources coming out of China, Tesla is preparing to make 4 million units of its next vehicle, a $25,000 model. For a few years now, Tesla has been teasing this cheaper car, which is expected to be unveiled soon, however details have been hard to come by. But now we got a new report from a China-based publication called 36KR. They claim that Tesla plans to distribute that 4 million vehicle mark among several factories across the world, including over 1 million in the upcoming Gigafactory in Mexico. While we should take this with a grain of salt, it does stand to reason that the huge process of making 20 million vehicles per year by the end of the decade is bound to have some leaks in the ship. Tesla has a capacity of about 2 million vehicles per year right now, and it would be hard to bring that up to more than 3 million units in the current vehicle lineup. At Electric, we estimate that the Cybertruck will get to around 5 million per year, but we must remember that the large truck doesn't really have a lot of global appeal with that shape. Not the shape of the Cybertruck in particular, but just the shape of having a pickup. Not terribly popular in small European streets. Anyways, the $25,000 Tesla is a major part of Tesla's goal, and the 4 million number certainly fits in with the rest of the lineup. According to the CEO of Chinese automaker NIO, Tesla has little influence over EV prices in China. That's according to him. After Tesla slashed prices on some of their most popular models in January, including the Model 3 and Y by up to $7,000, other companies responded with their own price changes. According to Yizai Global, over 40% of EVs and internal combustion engine brands, including Chinese BYD, have offered discounts or subsidies since that time. Now, despite this, the CEO said at an industry conference that blindly cutting prices will create ruthless competition in China. And he also said, perhaps to his demise, that NEO's gross margins are too low right now to take part as they are scaling production. Now, according to Lee, he said that, quote, Model 3 and Model Y are less complex in functions and configurations compared to Chinese car brands such as BYD, so it cuts prices to challenge its rivals. Uh, okay. Now, he did note that Tesla holds about 7% of the EV market in China, and NIO does have some room to boast, considering that they have back-to-back -back record quarters to finish out 2022. However, <laughs> NIO's gross margins, as we mentioned earlier, they fell from 18.9% last year to 13.7% in the fourth quarter of 2022. Speaking of challenging Tesla, GM and Ford can't get close in terms of EV deliveries, but they can fight for second place. GM has actually taken the second place prize in EV sales, at least for this quarter, or the most recent quarter. While Ford sold a total of 10,866 EVs in the first quarter, Chevy announced that they sold nearly 20,000 Bolt models, on top of about 1,000 Cadillac Lyrics and literally two Hummer EVs. Now, while this is a neat trophy to have, the gross profit on the Bolt versus the Ford Mach-E and the Ford Lightning truck are likely very different. Both companies are investing heavily in electrification, so the race for second place is still a little too early to call. Scylla, a California-based EV battery material startup, announced that its range-boosting silicon-based anodes called Titan Silicon are now commercially available after beginning mass production. This isn't just a lab experiment, though, as the upcoming Mercedes-Benz EQG G-Wagon will be the first to feature the new battery material. 
Experimental reports have shown in the past up to 40% increase in the energy density of silicon-based LIBs, or SI-LIBs. However, the silicon also has been shown to expand and contract, so that's something that the design team will definitely be interacting with. According to estimates from ID Tech EX, investments in silicon anodes have soared over the past few years, with over $1.9 billion in cumulative funding. Scylla says that the Titan silicon can improve charging performance, charging a battery from 10 to 80% in as little as 20 minutes, and they have plans to reduce it further in future releases. Electrek takes a ride in the Mercedes EQE SUV. Electrek Scooter Doll writes, Overall, I think the EQE SUV will fare quite well, especially in the U.S. where it's being aimed. It offers more compact, affordable counter to the EQS SUV, but with the same luxurious interior. Underneath, it's also promising even better technology, like the new heat pump design and disconnect unit. I found the suspension in the SUV to be a little tight for me personally. When I came across the occasional speed bump or pothole, I found the ride to be a bit more jarring than I would have expected. It's a very smooth ride overall, but I hoped that it would have been a tad sportier around tight turns for how aerodynamic it is. Now, because of the leaned aerodynamics off the hood and up the windshield, I found a pesky blind spot on my front left because of the thick A-pillar. Due to safety requirements, the EQE SUV beeps at you anytime you even get a mile over the speed limit. This got quite old quickly, but I was able to speak to the techs and turn it off. Considering the EQE SUV is built in Alabama, and its batteries come from a facility nearby in Bibb County, it checks two major boxes in qualifying for the federal tax credits. It's still a very expensive EV, so it won't be for everyone, but those who have the funds should give the SUV a test drive because it's one of the best interiors money can buy, complemented by range, performance, and optimized efficiency. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Martin Wood says, It will be interesting to see Wall Street's reactions to Tesla's first quarter earnings call. Will Tesla's margins still be good after the price cuts? Well, Martin, that's a very good question. Personally, I can't imagine that we'd see their margins remain the same, but I think they'll still be holding on to the lion's share. We talk a lot about GM, Ford, and Volkswagen investing every dime they have into electrification, and that's mostly because of the unprecedented news coming from Legacy Auto. But Tesla is already reaping the benefits from huge investments, and now they're doubling down. Tesla can't afford to reduce prices by thousands of dollars. Legacy Auto can't do that. And hopefully, with the next stages of investments that Tesla is doing in battery hegemony, they can again lower prices when Legacy Auto couldn't do that either. I think history will repeat itself in this sense. You know, investments, price cuts, the industry has to respond, and so on. Thanks for your comment, Martin, and thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.